Okay, guys, so this video is going to be about how to interpret your data. In class, we wrote down these general rules for how we discuss statistics. So if you haven't done that yet, you should get these into your lab notebook. And you should also have these, or I mean, sorry, into the, the, the data lab on the penny. But you want to also make sure that you put this somewhere. You may even want to put it in your... Um, <clears throat> digital notebook for the class and give it a title for how to discuss standard error because this is something we'll be using all year. Or just file this somewhere where you can reference it later. So you have made a graph. It has standard error of the mean bars on it plus or minus two standard error of the means, not just one. And your job now is to tell us what does this mean. So if you were going to write about this experiment, you would begin by describing the difference between the mean values for water, soap, and alcohol. So you would say, you know, water has the, has the highest average mean with this, followed by alcohol and soap. Then you have to discuss the overlap of the error bars for each one. So in this case, we would in fact say water is higher than alcohol, followed by soap, except that these error bars tell a slightly different story. So if you look at the error bars, let's look a little closer here, for water and soap, we see that the the error bars for water and soap, and it looks like it's gotten shifted a little bit here, it doesn't matter, um, that the error bars for water and soap do not overlap. So the lowest possible value that we're still like 98% confident the mean will fall between here and here, the lowest possible value that still holds 98% of our confidence is down here around 22 or so. The highest possible value that still has 98% confidence for soap is somewhere in the high 19s. So those don't overlap. So that means that we are 98% confident that these means are actually different. And what do I mean by that? Because a lot of people would be like, well, yeah, of course, those averages are different. You look at 26.42, and that's different than 16.16. And, and I would say, yes, except that when we tested the water and when we tested the soap, we didn't calculate these averages based upon a million trials. We did it based upon 20. And there was some differences between our results. So how much do I trust that if I did it again, 20 times that my average would be, you know, 16.16. Well, I trust it this much. I think there's a 98% chance it's going to fall somewhere in between the higher value and the lower value. The real average, if we could repeat the water dropping an infinite number of times. <clears throat> now, obviously in real life, you can't ever calculate some, repeat something an infinite number of times. We don't have the time or the energy to do it, but, um, if you did, you would get the real average. This allows us to skip having to repeat something an infinite number of times and think about how much do we trust this average after doing it just 20 times. Now, you'll notice that the spread for alcohol is much smaller. And if you go look at the data for alcohol, you're going to see that student, the number of drops students got on their penny were much closer together. There wasn't so much of a spread as there was in the high and low ends of the data. So we trust this average more because the results were more consistent. Now let's talk about overlap. So the first thing you need to do is you need to discuss the average. Then you discuss the overlap. And in this case, because soap and water do not overlap, we are 98% confident that those means are actually different and soap water holds, adheres and coheres less to a penny. Same is true for alcohol. We are confident that alcohol holds more water drops on a penny than soap does. But that's not the same for water and alcohol. Uh, their means, while the mean, the mean or average value we calculated is different, there's overlap between them. So the actual value for water could be as low as this, and the actual mean value for alcohol could be as high as this, which would put alcohol above water in terms of the number of drops it can hold. <clears throat> so how do we deal with this in inconsistency that we don't trust our data, that we don't trust that those means are actually different? We talk in terms of confidence. So we would say water and alcohol, the, sta the two standard error of the means shown for water and alcohol overlap. That's the 
vocabulary I'd use. I would say the mean, the standard error bars overlap. And that means that we are not confident, we're not confident that the means are actually different. Right? Or put another way, we, we aren't sure if those means are the same or if they're different. We're just not confident. Yes, the number of the mean is different, but we're not confident that they're actually different. If you could drop water an infinite number of times, and if you could drop alcohol in a penny an infinite number of times, will the values actually be different or will they be the same? Well, we are not confident that they will actually be different. Okay? So in biology from now on, whenever we graph something and we get an average, we're also going to graph the standard error of the mean. And then we're going to talk about whether the thing we did, so in this case, we added soap, we added alcohol to water, whether the thing we did changed the result or didn't. And the way we'll talk about it is in terms of our confidence that the means are actually different. All right, let me know if you have questions about that.